G'day everyone, Matt Elder of MattElder.com here, and in this video we're going to look at what we're calling our Lego Scenario Creation. You might be looking at this and wondering what exactly it is I'm looking at. I'd like to think of it as a Lego version of a snow globe or a diorama. Think of it as a cross between Lego building with Macropolis, Mosaics, Technic, Architecture and Dot techniques all thrown into the mix. Add a little motion and wrap it up in a narrative. This is a Family Bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share, or be super awesome and subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they are uploaded. In this video we'll be covering what these LEGO scenarios are, the main components, a look at the three different themes created here, the standard developing, look at the individual components, the gears involved, origin of the name, and ideas on the future direction. This is going to be a longer than usual video. The concept is based upon wrapping one of these new LEGO DOTS bracelets around a standard LEGO wheel. Once you do that, you pop the axle through the wheel and it opens up all sorts of possibilities for motion and storytelling. Sometimes I have to think this would have been the furthest thing from the minds of the designers of the bracelets. That is the joy of LEGO. People will mould it for their own uses beyond its original inception. Here we've themed out three scenario examples. One being based around Star Wars, another being the City of London, and another the famous 19th century Japanese print, the Great Wave of Kangagawa. Each of these having varying levels of complexity, so hoping to create an entry point for the various ranges of abilities. These scenario boxes we like to think of as blank canvases or frameworks. Then they can be skinned or themed out in any creative way you can think of. A lot of the time when building something mechanical with moving parts, it becomes a single use design and can't be adapted for anything else. The goal was to try to come up with a universal base design so don't have to keep reinventing the wheel each time. So a fair amount of time was spent on the engineering side, prototyping, reaching dead ends, cycling back and starting again. I'm not a technic guru and know enough to get by. I'm sure these can be further refined by experts but gives a solid foundation. At this size, feel it will enable one to create scenarios based around favourite scenes from books, movies, TV shows, artworks, cities or any other popular culture idea or subject matter. It also means you don't need thousands and thousands of pieces and months to build. Thus it helps to keep it accessible to everyone. There are four main components to a Lego scenario. The action or wheel box, the front display portion, the billboard and then a drive source whether it's by hand or by some sort of motor. Designed it around a 16 by 16 plate and interconnecting modules. This seemed to be striking a good balance between size and ultimately cost. It hooks into the already existing design language of micro builds. Connections can be made to Micropolis layouts and add motion to their cities. Let's start off by looking at each of the three themes that we've done here. This is the Star Wars scenario. It's based around episode four, apart from the minifigs. The front box has the trench run scene with Luke's X-Wing, which can move side to side. Also has a gun turret that spins around to shoot down rebel ships. There is a maintenance panel which opens so you can get in and make any subtle adjustments to the gears if you need to. This is my first serious attempt at any greebling or creating the hint of detail and it was a fun process. Moving to the action box you have the rebel ships flying in one direction while the empire ships on the other two wheels flying in the opposite direction to intercept. Ships that you have here are a handful of TIE fighters, Millennium Falcon, uh, some couple of Star Destroyers, TIE Bomber, TAM TIE 4, small little X-Wing, and of course the iconic Millennium Falcon. A few of the colours might be slightly off, but just dealing with the colours and pieces that we have available to us. On the billboard, we have the Death Star in the process of firing the primary weapon. The Death Star itself has a light relief effect going over four tiles in height. Tried to have the main dish a little countersunk. Being 16 bricks wide, think it has a nice orbiting effect. The other scene is from the climax of Empire Strikes Back with Luke and Vader fighting it out on the Cloud City platform. Being challenging to create the platform in alternating one and two brick wide sections, 
think it has turned out okay, but really opens up the possibilities with being able to include minifigs. Yes, there is some slight inconsistency with the scale, but think of it as artistic license. Like when you see a movie posters with giant background heads and tiny foreground elements. My apologies to any Star Wars purists out there. We are probably casual Star Wars Lego fans, so minifigs have all been mixed up and we only have a handful. Yes, I know Luke wasn't wearing his orange flight suit in this scene, but you get the idea. One thing to note, due to the tolerance of one of the Star Destroyers, the wheels only rotate in one direction, as this Star Destroyer can be massaged through that gap in going this direction, but if you try to do it the other way, it gets wedged and jammed. That's why you might hear a slight clicking sound as the Star Destroyer goes around. Next up is the London scenario. We'll start off with the action box, as it has the iconic London red double-decker bus. We've mixed up the colours of the bands as you go around to match the ground type. The first band is teal with trees and parkland type environments. The next band is a road with the bus, car and pickup truck. The next band is a train with some track. The blue medium azure band is the waterway with sailboats and a cargo ship. The last band rounds out with some more trees and foliage and a plane flying past. The holes that allow you to dress the strap on the band while you're wearing it here are slightly larger than a stud so if you try to put anything into that hole it's just going to fall out. We did find however that if you have a cone piece inverted and push it in it will start to clutch the cone piece. The clutch isn't brilliant but enough to hold the cone if you get it just right such as this tree here that's an inverted cone into the band there. If you don't have them in there, then as you can see here, you start to get holes and just doesn't fill up and look as good. Onto the billboard. The billboard is a 16 by 16 design, so you have to get creative with any mosaic image that you come up with. Here we've gone for Big Ben and clouds in light relief. The bottom three or four rows, you always have to be careful when designing as the pieces coming around on the bands can hit them if the tolerance is too tight or they stick out too far. The front display is a general water scene over some rocks. It gives you a way to get from the top of the action box down to any other Macropolis base you might like to connect to it. This scenario I did want to keep simple without too many crazy or elaborate building techniques. The five bands in the action box have gone a little overboard to show the possibilities of planes, trains and automobiles and everything in between. If it wasn't so much a demonstration piece, I'd probably lose one of the types of transport and just to let the action box breathe a little bit more and not feel as crowded. Lastly is the Great Wave of Kanagawi Japanese print design. I'm not Japanese, so sorry if I've mispronounced that. Here is laid out the moving billboard image and the design that it was based off. This shows that the Lego scenario can be applied to other media, in this case artwork and designs. Again used a subtle relief for the depth as the waves in the front are slightly higher than the waves at the back. We've used these quarter circle tiles to give it a feeling of organicness as originally it felt a little blocky with just plain old square tiles on it. Also use transparent blue rounded studs of the blue plates to give a couple of subtle shades of blue. There is Mount Fuji in the background but like the original print, it is very subtle. Okay, so we've wrapped the design around the drivetrain for that, and now we'll move on to the middle wheel box. The effect that I was going for is the waves closer to you move faster and break more dramatically. The wave in the back has that effect of being further away, so slower moving and more subtle, much like if you stood on a beach looking out at the waves, those closest to you are crashing with quick movements, while those that are further in distance are moving more slowly. The middle wheel has a fishing boat, also present in the original image, but it's more of a second read item. It travels in the opposite direction to the waves, and at a speed that is slower than the fastest wheel, but then faster than the slowest wheel, so it has like a medium speed in between. For the purposes of this demonstration, I've done the back two sides transparent. Thus you can see more gears and pulleys and what's actually going on in there. The front display is imagining what might be below the waterline, so very much where you can start to make your own creative interpretation of extending this scene. So there is some green seaweed locked in between 1x6x5 panels along with some transparent blue studs. In the middle is actually a whole section of these studs. I put a little wheel mechanism in there so it can turn up the studs. The mechanism is a little undercooked as the little studs can make it really difficult to turn and needs further refinement. 
but conceptually showing what else can be done here and trying to add a further dynamic motion of the sea churning. I've decided to split this video into two or three parts and here seemed like a natural breakpoint. Check the next video in the series around this one which will have a more detailed look at the developing standard mechanics and how it may develop into the future. This is a family bricks video. Be sure to hit that like button, share or be super awesome and subscribe. Click the bell and select all to be notified of new videos as they are uploaded. Thanks very much for watching. Here are some other videos you might find of interest. Until next time when we talk about all things Lego.